Companions are a massive part of Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. They can be equipped like you, they can be trained like you, and they're almost a second player. Or maybe even more. In this video I'm going to be going over what companions are used for, where to find them, and the best ones to get. Welcome to the ultimate guide to companions in Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. You'll find these companions of course by entering a town. Head and go to the tavern district and you'll see if there's any about. You can see this by the top character bar, or you can enter the tavern and do it that way. The companions can range anywhere from about 600 denars to about 2500, so make sure you're picking the right one for the right time in your playthrough. But remember, you get what you pay for. The more you pay, obviously the better they will be, but you have to weigh up that price. Maybe you pay less for a weaker companion at the beginning, then you help them level up throughout your gameplay, along with your own character. A few things to keep in mind during your companion search is they take up space in your party, and until you're a high enough level, you can only have four in your party, so pick wisely. I will get onto the best ones to pick and choose later on in the video. First off, if you want to see your companion's info, either right click on the character icon when you found them, or press N into the encyclopedia. Go to heroes and then occupation, then wanderer. All the companions in your game will be listed. You can see their name, age, relation, occupation, and perhaps most importantly, their culture. Now their culture is important because later on in the game, companions can be used as governors for castles. Once you take a castle, you can manage it. Build infrastructure, garrison it, fill up the dungeons, but also add a governor to oversee it. This will make the construction more efficient, the people happier on some occasions, and all around help out with what's going on there. You may notice that I did say people in the region can be happier on some occasions. This is because the companion's culture who governs it is very important. To get the most out of it and the happiest populace in the region, make sure your governor is of the same culture of the place that they're managing. Let's say you have a castle in the Sturgeon's territory. Make sure your companion that you chose to govern it is from Sturgia. You can find this, as I said, in the encyclopedia where it says culture. Now, of course, you don't need a governor, so if you don't have that cultured companion, it's best to leave them out because it has negative effects if you don't pick the right companion. Not only can companions be used for governing castles, but also creating new parties in your clan. You can send out caravans led by them or even create other parties like yours. Send them off with troops to increase relations with other people and spread your might across Calradia. It's not the most useful thing to have another party running around all the time unless you are going to war. Here, you can create a new party with a companion leading it. Then, if you own a kingdom, create an army. Ask your companion's party to join the army, and then voila! You can create your own massive troops to go around sieging and pillaging that you perhaps have seen during your earlier games of other armies wandering about. It neglects the influence cost for carrying around so many men, so it's a pretty good way of doing it. Companions though all have their own skills like your character. Make sure you do your research before recruiting them as they can have many benefits, but this is where I get onto the best companions to recruiting into your army. Although it might not be what you expect, so many people and guides I've seen give you specific companions, like the names of them, and that isn't really helpful at all, because Bannerlord is a dynamic world. Unless you turn death off completely, People live and die constantly throughout your game, and this includes companions, so many games won't have the same companions as each other. Yes, there will be overlaps, but I've seen many people in many saves that don't have the same companions as mine, and vice versa, since mine have died or theirs have died. So I'll give you the types of companions that you can get. First off, you have your warrior companions. These guys are going to be the best fighters. They're not much use at governing or region or smithing for you, but they'll protect your men at any cost on the battlefield. You can tell what type of companion you're dealing with because of their name. The warriors will have shield maiden, red, Cold Biter, Wanderer, Break Skull, or Wronged in their name. Shield Maidens and Red Companions are the best. Cold Biters are up there as well, proficient in most weapons, but you'll find most of the time they excel in two handed swords. Wanderers and Wronged people are fairly low tier warriors, but they're cheap, and of course, you can train them up to get them better, so it's an investment that you might be willing to make if money is finite for you. Next, you have your tacticians. Their names consist of Luck and Blood Axe. These companions will be capable of putting up a fight, so they're often decent on the front lines, but they specialize in giving your party a boost in stats when it comes to difficult situations, when you're pulling off complex maneuvers and formations in the party. They'll be done so much slicker and better with a tactician in the army. 
The scout companions go by the name of Frostbeard and Fish. Fish being the weaker of the two with a 60 base scouting and Frostbeard with 80, but both decent at fighting. They'll help you move faster on the world map, see more and help you find tracks to hunt down enemy parties. Then you have your healers. They go by the names of Willow Bark and, funnily enough, Healer. But remember, whilst Willow Bark is better than most, the companions with Healer in their name are far superior when it comes to treating your troops. Less of your men will be hurt on the battlefield, and if they are, it's more likely they'll be wounded rather than killed in your party. So at least one healer is almost imperative to any decent fighting force. And finally you have the rogues, possibly the least used companions at the start of the game, they have the names Black, Longknife, Accursed and Robber. They'll help you with raiding and bribing, so yeah, they are not very useful early on, but later on down the line they are a good companion to have if you need to bribe or get someone to do what you want, but they're not vital to early game success. So most of the time, you'll be able to have 4 companions in your party. This means you have a finite amount and I wouldn't recommend getting multiple of each type. So what should you get? Well, a strong healer is imperative. Willow Bark is sufficient, but if you can afford it, get a full healer companion. Furthermore, pick up a Frostbeard, as they're great for speeding up your party and helping you look out of enemies, but they're also pretty good at the old fighting part, so they can help you out in sticky situations. Tacticians aren't too important, but a rogue is great for later in the game, and a warrior is the perfect for the early game companion. Probably the first one you should get is a warrior, as you can get good money early in the game fighting thugs in the streets, which you can take your companion with you, so a good fighter is paramount. But that's pretty much it. Where to find your companions, what they do, and who to go for. If you enjoyed the video and was helpful, please consider subscribing, as it really helps me grow. But until then, I will see you in the next one.